Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is another of our Hot Topic webinars by Horizon. Uh, today we're going to hear from some of the team returning from the International Archibus Users Conference, which was held in San Diego this year, um, who will share some key insights and news from the uh, event and also highlight some enhanced capabilities of the latest releases, both in uh, 22.1 and 23.1, which is right around the corner. Um, watch for some interesting items, particularly around the enterprise asset management and source data integration, as well as in the capital project and strategic planning management modules. There's going to be a bit more in uh, mobile and metrics, of course, and sustainability initiative tracking and uh, emergency health and safety reporting. Horizon is committed to helping our clients excel by offering the latest software service support and advice. How do we do that? Well, it's because of our experience, expertise, and resources. Operating from 2000, we serve our clients across Canada and North America with not only software, but a full end-to-end -end range of services, including training, resourcing, development work, CAD services, as well as uh, process and business analytics. We continue to support and spread the word about the value of the technology solutions and Archibus for the real world businesses and organizations. Archibus offers organizational intelligence. Part of our mission is to share the evolution of the IWMS solutions and demonstrate the ability these systems have to address changing business needs and issues to promote the value of the facility data within the context of the larger enterprise. We also help our clients navigate their technology choices within the Archibus system and among other source enterprise data systems. So to help prepare for future reporting and operational needs, as a professional services firm and premier business partner, we offer extensive knowledge and share best practices in managing real property and assets and assist in the implementation of technology solutions. Why? In the end, it's because what our clients need and this is how we've evolved to help our clients succeed. At Nexus, attendees get the opportunity to see firsthand how successfully users are utilizing the software and innovating with the product and also get to see how far and wide the Archibus reach really is. On screen, there's the latest reported numbers. Archibus Enterprise Systems, whose industry-wide benefits has been chosen by over 17,000 organizations, is deployed across the globe in over 190 countries and in 30 languages. It crosses time zones, currencies, unit of measure, and standards such as BOMA, etc. The suite boasts 35 plus modules to address different business needs and areas. Some clients or users today may really only see a thin slice of the capability of the suite. They may spend most of their career with on-demand or space modules or just lease and asset tracking. But educating ourselves about the art of the possible or the dare to dream, uh, as my colleague says, interconnected data is going to be key going forward. We can't fail to recognize the vast capability of Archibus either in front or behind the system. Horizon wants to help prepare our clients for an increasingly information-based world and one that increasingly demands real-time, accurate, shareable data and analytics for agile decision-making. So the why. Why do we strive for knowledge and fight for resources and budget and foster collaboration? Why is Archibus and some success organizations so successful with it? And why really should you care? Well, because it offers a valuable way to make yourself valuable within your organization and gives your group many more opportunities to achieve, excel, and succeed. Archibus is successful because the software and the users who run it offer value. They improve efficiencies, they increase client satisfaction, they help achieve operational excellence. Um, it promotes organizational health by over, overall cost savings and profitability. And it offers trend reporting for oversight planning and agile decision making. Um, it also enables data share, which provides um, accuracy. So delivering the data that your organization needs to whom, where, and when, and in the format needed makes you more valuable and gives your group many more opportunities. So this is the agenda for today. Um, we've got five 15-minute presentations. Uh, the five introductions already done. So uh, next we're going to have an overview with Wayne Lico. Um, last year we got terrific feedback on the dynamic format of having multiple shorter presentations, so we plan to keep it short and sweet. Um, I have four, with me four presenters, Wayne Lico, Managing Partner here at Horizon, who will provide a quick overview of Nexus. 
Tiffany Lamb is an application architect here who will be joining us from Calgary and sharing on a re recap of the technical track. Next up will be Frank Lawrence, who's a business account manager for North America and the Caribbean, and he'll be talking about the environmental and health safety aspects of ARCABUS. And Jasmine Jakes, who's one of our business analysts, will be covering off some of the work done in the applications themselves. And if there's time after all that, well, you'll get me for another few more minutes um, for some community development and, and more. But before we get to them, uh, we do want to hear from you. So the plan will be to leave some time at the end um, in an open mic session. Um, so I want you or anybody who is down in San Diego, if you have comments or, or impressions or best takeaways, uh, you're welcome to share. So here we go. Thank you. Wayne? In this industry, uh, there's still a lot of conversation around getting the attention, getting the support from information technology. Uh, they actually joked, the clients joked in that uh, meeting about forming a, a support group for next year to get together and uh, and share their uh, their woes. But I think you're seeing a trend with uh, these different deployment options that are available on premise and cloud. Uh, that the IT is definitely more involved in either uh, helping, uh, you know, form that decision or they're forcing clients to look at how these apps like Archibus uh, get deployed in, in the cloud more often than not. So definitely an ongoing uh, topic and one that we see with a lot of our clients around how best to deploy and support and uh, the various challenges that are um, that are being there. So you can see some of the topics are uh, similar topics and, and ongoing concerns that you would have seen at other uh, conferences. But certainly the reporting and the asset management are that are trending now with uh, with a lot of the clients. Now, one of the things that got uh, discussed, uh, albeit uh, I'm going to say briefly, is that V23, version 23 of Arculus is coming. Uh, so what can I tell you and uh, what can I not tell you? Well, the first thing is that I can tell you that there's no official release date. Uh, if I'm going to expect it, I would expect it sometime in the uh, third quarter of this year. Uh, we as partners definitely saw some information around the functionality, uh, but honestly right now the the main focus around the release are these these terms that you would have seen, the CapEx, OpEx, Totex. This idea of um, unifying the, the costs, the expenditures in the application across the various activities and so I think there's a, a major initiative to uh, offer those types of reports up to clients, and you'll see some of that coming out in this first release of, uh, of version 23. Uh, another thing, again, is the continuation on the reporting. Uh, there's obviously anything from, you know, they introduced home pages uh, a while ago, and and so for a lot of clients, they've been working on trying to deploy home pages. In the version 23, there's things like a, a wizard to help with uh, defining your own home pages. There's a visualization tool to give you more 3D uh, visualization of some of your data. Uh, really powerful stuff that I think are going to make the, the data more accessible and, and more uh, understandable to a larger audience. So it's again a continuation of that idea. I've got data. Now what do I do with it? You know, a few of the other things that we saw again, asset management is, a, is an ongoing uh, improvement concern for our bus, and they're going to continue to expand upon that functionality all the way through to um, the connectivity of the assets and, and how you know the assets are being shared and, and worked on across your your uh, organization. Uh, shared workplace in the, in the space side of things, they've been introducing this idea of team space and uh, the idea of, of shared workstations and collaborative spaces. You know, they did talk uh, a lot again uh, about the idea of room reservations and hoteling and 
and integration of those things with things like Outlook tools. Uh, those all fold into this idea of a shared workplace. Uh, energy management is anticipated to have some um, significant improvements. Uh, you've seen some of the improvements already in the tool where you have things like the uh, EDI connectors to be able to connect to your uh, your information from your energy providers and so on, and so that'll uh, again continue to be enhanced within the uh, within the application. Uh, BIM is always building information modeling is always uh, a hot topic as clients continue to evolve their portfolios into. Um, I'm going to say away from the, the pure AutoCAD and into things like Revit. And uh, again, the tool continues to improve with that connectivity of being able to share information between the uh, uh, between the databases. And as always with any Archibus release, there's a, a multitude of activity improvements. So right now, Archibus is doing some uh, final testing on which components are going to be released. So we, we expect that we're going to start seeing more details around the version 23, uh, what's in and what's out, and be able to uh, share some of that with you as, as we've done in the past. We'll undoubtedly uh, pull together another session and introduce you all to uh, version 23 and uh, be able to share some of those uh, uh, new features and releases with you. Okay, next year. Um, next year, the Nexus is National Harbor on uh, the, the river near uh, Washington, D.C. If you've ever been there, basically, it's the, the river that runs uh, basically through. Uh, nice and close to, to D.C., the National Mall. You can hop a water taxi or take a shuttle bus. It's a huge complex, this National Harbor, where there's hotels, entertainment, shopping. So it would be great uh, to have uh, certainly a, a shorter haul to get there. Uh, maybe not as quite as uh, scenic as the uh, uh, the Pacific Ocean, but certainly got a lot of history and a lot of things that uh, you can see down in the National Harbor. So hopefully we'll be able to see you guys there. and. Uh, I uh, look forward to uh, chatting with you some more through the year. With that, Ayanna, that's, uh, that's it. Great. Thank you very much, Wayne. Um, next up, we have, uh, we have Tiffany. She's going to uh, go through some of the uh, technical track um, and, the, and just pull out some of the main things uh, for you. All right, so um, I attended the technical track and that just happens just before the day for the user conferences at San Diego. But basically what I have to share with you is kind of that new tidbits of the version 22. Uh, so there are some enhancements with the connectors, really with that focus towards that growing trends of the BIM and energy management. There's the new and improved geospatial information system map controller go through that in a bit, some metric notification template functionalities, and a lot on uh, the mobile logging capabilities. So the Archibus now has, in 22, a sample out-of-the-box connector for the electronic data transfer, uh, so sorry, the electronic data interchange, and that's kind of passed from the electrical companies in a standard format now imported into Archibus. There is a connector also for the construction operations building information exchange, the COBE connectors. So that's a standard workbook with multiple worksheets. This connector can now take the information from a very large data set and bring that into Archibus. There's also a historical connector log. So in the past, there was a message log. So when you do run your connectors, Basically, every time that connector, a connector ran, there would be a log and a message for how well it went. And this message would be replaced every time you reran that connector again. So now there's historical tracking for the status of the connectors as they execute over time. In regards to the EDI, it's a special delimited text format, and it would look very similar to this sample here. Uh, it's obtained by many of the electrical and natural gas vendors, and 
basically a format that works between business computer systems. So each vendor has some flexibility on how they want to represent their bills. Although it's certainly not a nicely laid out spreadsheet, but the key data is there, being the meter numbers, the accounts, the dates, and the usage. And Archibus has the sample connector, which interprets the information, basically specifying some of those start and end positions of that data that you see here and throwing that into the build table. So with some tweaking, you can configure this connector to work for you, so easily making that bill data importable into the Archibus system. With the Kobe connectors, now the Kobe connector itself, it's not a standard Archibus install, but the tool set to have the sample into your 22 environment is somewhere uh, buried within the, um, the product on the server side within the, um, the files there but uh, Kobe itself is a standard information exchange for building life cycles. So once you're happy with something like the sample workbook, which would comprise of several worksheets of data, if you are receiving Kobe and you need some help to bring that into the system, we can help you uh, with that. If you do try to install that particular sample, Basically, it would be one Kobe import controller and various other connectors that hook into the individual worksheets. Basically, it would run the main controller connector and then run the other ones in a specific order, gathering the information from these worksheets and importing it into the various tables of Archibus. Now, bear in mind, these connectors uh, do depend that the fields that you are importing it to, uh, the size of the fields and the schema that you have within Archibus have to be able to accommodate that data. But so it basically this connector, the Kobe one, it's good for importing the data right now, not so much for exporting a workbook. And it's fit for, say, just the Kobe workbooks. So you must be curious, if it could import a workbook with multiple worksheets for Kobe, then can it do it for all other kinds of workbook? In theory, it could, but it's not a standard feature out of the box. And um, basically, it's still quite new to the uh, product itself. So hopping on to the GIS map controls, there's a new one called Leaflet. And what that is is kind of a easy to use and lightweight library for the web maps to display on the Web Central reports. It is intended to load faster than the original ISRI API that was used in Archibus Web Central. And you do have a bit more options for presentation and reporting of any of those map views. You can also deploy between ISRI or Google as the map provider. So if you're asking which one, well, ISRI is already Archibus provided, and Archibus ships with the license to use ISRI map services with all the applications in there, whereas Google has no Archibus provisions. But as you can see from the side-to-side -side comparison, it does display those base maps differently. Uh, the Google, however, does need a license key if you do have over uh, 2,000, uh, sorry, 25,000 maps loads per 24 hours over a period of 90 consecutive days. And that's when um, that would be more going towards a corporate license key. So most of the websites and applications that do use the standard Google Maps, they might be free of charge in general, but be aware that um, Google does have different policies as to corporate use. So I'm not really a lawyer, of course, but I do recommend you going through the Google policies for Google Maps based on your business needs if you do prefer to go with that Google Map route. Another feature you can do is if you are starting to use your home pages, in 22, you can have your metric as a leaflet-flavored map displayed on your home page. And as you go through and go through some of the markers, you can highlight through and see some of the numbers up here and also click through and be taken to another report. So standard uh, metric behavior. It could also be color coded to your high, medium, and low benchmarks for the metric displays. 
or it could just be your gray figure if you want. You could also, if you are using the scorecard as well, you could potentially click on a particular metric, and if there's geolocation data to that metric, then you can choose a granularity, let's say by building, but display it on a pop-up map view. So again, using Leaflet to display that same metric data uh, for you to see. With the previous map controls, there was always various ways you can display the marker systems. So these are also available in Leaflet. You could use, say, a simple dot style marker just to specify the location of items. You can go by a unique themed, so by a, a value, a unique values, say your building use, or by a class range. So under 500, it's a certain color. Past 500, it's a different color. You can also have those kind of values gradually change in size based on the size of the data or the class range. Another thing you can do is proportional, where it's more based on a real world scale of distance. So it's not necessarily used for you to say, what's my employee count for a building? But if you do want to track something like your evacuation perimeters from a building, you can start using those kind of proportional markers. Leaflet does have a new marker type called clusters. And what they are is to dynamically uh, group the statistics together uh, based on the geographic location. So as I start zooming in, these markers are starting to separate individually and break out. So same thing if I start zooming out, as I zoom out more, then the like markers, if they're close enough together, they'll start grouping back together. So it's really great for presentational purposes when you're viewing a full map. For net, uh, metric notifications, for those of you who are using metrics, there's now a notification template that you can define. Basically, you can specify the content of the message, who it gets sent to, and on what conditions that metric is sending out. For example, it, only if it's hitting critical benchmarks or if it's hitting a low benchmark. And you can specify how frequently you need to see this notification. Maybe you want to see it for five days straight and, um, and repeat it daily. You can also report it based on granularity, so you only want to know which buildings you need to pay attention to or which sites, for, for example. This is great if you're administrating a process among all the buildings or all the sites in the portfolio, and you need to see this process go through to completion so you can have uh, these reminders for yourself to get that to sort through as to which ones are still um, needing attention, helping you track what needs to be done. For the mobile framework, there's additional logging functionality that can be turned on to on the device for the end users. And this is more to help with the developers to investigate the bug. It's not necessarily meant for those who are actively using the, soft, uh, the um, Archibus mobile to have that on all the time. But basically, you can specify the level, level of logging. So you can only show your infos or your warnings or just your error categories for the messages. You can also use different combinations on these on-off switches for the logs. For example, your console log is really just handy for your developer who is viewing the mobile app in a Chrome emulator, so not through the actual phone or tablet itself. That lets them see what kind of activities are happening in the background and what kind of statements are running in the background. There's a log file that's stored on the device itself, so you can specify some parameters such as the max size and the number of archived files it would keep on the system. So basically, the system would either truncate or it will replace the other files that are older as they exceed any of those settings on that file writer. There's another version um, where you could also sync these logs to Web Central. You can specify the number of records you're allowing that device log to go into your database log. And you can view the logs in a Web Central report. 
So you can view it by mobile activity, by the user, and even by a time and date range. So that pretty much goes through the uh, mobile log, uh, I guess the um, features of 22 for the technical track. I'll be ready to pass the mic to Frank. Thanks, Tiffany. So Frank's going to share some sustainability and um, emergency preparedness, some uh, health and safety uh, items. Most definitely. Um, I attended the uh, the San Diego Nexus, and um, I was in the room with um, quite a few people. Um, not a lot of people that were actually had the environmental module installed, but a lot of people are intrigued by it and, and what it has to offer. And intriguing enough is that a lot of people had it as part of their uh, mandate on the environment within their corporation or department uh, to actually do something for uh, environmental sustainability. And what I'm going to try to do today is uh, just give a quick uh, bird's eye view of each section of environmental risk management. And then I'm going to go through a quick overview of the different updates that were added. Um, I'm in particular, I'm, I'm really impressed with what Archibus has done with this portion under environmental risk compared to how it first came out. They've made it and simplified it for the client in the sense that if you didn't have a process or, or structure in place, you do now. So from a compliancy perspective and a data perspective, they lead you uh, as to how you'd actually go and implement um, environmental health and safety uh, solution inside your organization. So I'm uh, quite impressed. I'm going to just flip to a screen here, and I'm going to walk through um, the eight modules quick, and I'll give you guys the actual um, updates. But this is the environmental sustainability assessment. And this is where you can measure performance with indicators, and you can mitigate risk within your organizations. And again, everything that you see on this screen, it all looks great. But if you don't have a, a plan in place with a data set in place, uh, from a scope and engagement perspective, you're not going to get here. So a lot of our clients actually may actually have this information lying around on uh, on a spreadsheet or some document. And I feel that um, the way Archibus has everything laid out is just a matter of coming up with um, a compliance plan and a process with your data to get you here. But what you're looking at here, again, is uh, just an assessment scoreboard, and it gives a graphical approach to evaluate your high priority from an environmental perspective within your organization. Um, this is on the energy management side. Uh, they provide a really good GUI, so if I was running a corporation or a department, I can drill down uh, by country or by province or by city, and I can actually um, look at each individual um, hydro bill and rank them across uh, the country. Um, the uniqueness about this is um, you can track and manage your energy usage cost, and you can actually look at reducing your carbon footprint. Um, you can also allows you to explore optional uh, utility options to buy into programs that can sell you utility at a cheaper rate as well because if you feel you're overpaying in comparison to other parts uh, of the country. Uh, this also allows you to provide um, audit capabilities to easily access and aggregate and validate your consumption patterns within your organization. Uh, this one is brand new. This is um, green building. And within the green building in, in the uh, graphics, it compares emissions by building, scope, year. It actually drills down to the admission scope in detail. And again, um, Archibus provides a pretty good layout in the background of what you have to do to achieve these. And most organizations actually have this information in place. It's just a matter of getting the compliancy and the um, assessments done. So. Um, anybody that would implement this module will be looking at achieving a carbon footprint as environmental accessibility with certification goals. Obviously, you need a third-party organization uh, to help you with that, but we can direct you to organizations that can help you with your carbon footprint as well. Waste management is, um, is another one. Um, within the Archibus waste management feature, it provides um, what they call the fit defensible information to assess effectiveness of waste reduction and recycling programs. Um, if you go into just about any um, department or go into any corporation like Suncor, 
They've got recycle programs in place for um, all their garbages that they use within the kitchens and the staff, as well as any kind of uh, paper waste, anything having to do with toner. Um, this would help track um, those things as well within the organization. This is a fun one. Um, a lot of organizations are still trying to figure out, you know, does IT, does real property, does security, um, who actually holds the emergency preparedness plan for the organization. Um, Archibus provides this lovely module that helps emergency preparedness people view systems and zones within four plants, provide critical inf safety information for emergency responders, which is actually kind of cool. Um, I will show later on in this presentation how via um, a smartphone or a tablet you can actually show um, a first responder like a firefighter has those ways, chemicals, where people are located, where equipment's located in the palm of your hands as well. But again, the beauty about the emergency preparedness is it organizes information to implement disaster recovery plans that you can quickly uh, resume normal operations on. Because the whole reason for this is, you know, we, we're looking at those folks out in Fort McMurray and we've seen the response team, and they've had a pretty good plan for uh, exit. Now we're watching to see what the plan is for the people to return. So having an application like this allows you to do that. Here's a fun one. Uh, a lot of people have uh, compliance programs in place, but they don't necessarily have structure around it. And Archiva spent a lot of time implementing uh, a solution that you can graphically or geographically look at your organizations and drill down into um, where your compliance programs have been implemented. And it enables managers to quickly visualize where their highest risks are on projects and where they're located, as well as the big one, regulatory status. Um, we have some regulatory statuses that are um, provincial or it could be by city or it could be federally re re relegated regulated, and within this you can actually break it down by province or by city or country so you can see the federal, regional, or provincial standards for your regulations. Clean building. This is also um, a fun one. Uh, not a lot of people are, are using this, but if you look on the chart you'll see um, asbestos. You'll be surprised at the amount of buildings that still have asbestos in place, but Within this clean building module, users can quickly identify areas with hazardous conditions, and using these graphical views, they can streamline sampling and documentation process to a course of abatement. From a legal perspective, some people would actually, if you see the rooms redded out, um, those rooms will be redded out until construction comes in and actually um, provides the uh, work order and service request to actually make that um, to compliant. Um, one of the other um, Key features under it is, is it minimizes potential expensive litigation that could come from having staff work around asbestos uh, for a long time. Moving along, environmental health and safety. Last time we had these, I actually um, presented on um, environmental health and safety. Uh, and this, we're displaying uh, maps and floors that show basically incidences and locations, and you can actually drill down to actually see more detailed information on what happened. Um, they have lab safety here, uh, medical exams. Um, it's all going to be dependent on the infrastructure that you have. Uh, a commercial office from a federal government department is different from a hospital, which is different from uh, hazardous material waste on a Suncor Energy site. But basically, this uh, application of module helps you drill down and display these, and you can actually um, label if you have staff members need potential um, training on health and safety. Uh, every office uh, from the Ministry of Ontario needs to have somebody that's in charge of health and safety, and basically, um, within the health and safety, you can actually have people who have received certifications and training. You can actually track that certification and training within this uh, application as well. Last but not least, um, we have material safety and data sheets, and we also talked about this uh, as well. These safety data sheets let users identify the type of locations and hazards on their floor plans, and they let them fastly and effectively respond to events like toxic materials or helping ensure safety and business continuity within uh, an organization. Basically, 
that helps reduce administrative costs as well in effort to maintaining up-to-date uh, safety data sheets for your organization. I know we're not supposed to ask any questions, so I will keep moving along. One second. Thanks, Frank. That's terrific. Oh, I have more. Oh, oh good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so, on version 22, there are quite a few um, updates. I'm going to run through uh, a couple of them. Um, a lot of people that implement energy management solutions, uh, they're doing it, and maybe I'll just walk through these quick and then I'll get to the actual screens. Uh, the There's updates no are... Rush. We are in good time. Pardon me? There's no rush. We are in good time. So. Okay. okay. Um, within energy management, they added uh, raw data to business intelligence from your bill, which... Um, Tiffany kind of uh, stole my thunder on a little bit on that, but I'll talk about that as well. Building rate plans, uh, basically sub-metering infrastructure, efficiency reports, EDI connector is what we were talking about earlier, uh, hazardous materials bin level, which I'm going to get into, and hazard material mobile app. They also added integrated hazard uh, mat reporting, verifying emergency contacts, which I'm going to show actually screenshots of all these things are on my screen today. So what we have here is we're defining where a meter is, and the, the beauty about um, the next two screens is one of the secret sauces that have changed Archibus. Archibus has uh, evaluated the industry, and they've gone out to the Honeywells, the Siemens, the Armorons, the Johnson Controls, all those building automation systems that a lot of our uh, property managers and owners own, and they've basically found a way to integrate into those building automation systems so we can share data. So the beauty about this now is, is now we can actually track meters and vendors and actual equipment and actually get statistical information on it from a reporting perspective. Once we have statistical information, um, now we can do things like we can flag for errors because although we've got wonderful Ontario Hydro and Ottawa Hydro Ontario Power Duration, generation, a lot of these systems are 80 years old. There's a lot of faults in them. And with having these new smart meters in place, you actually can keep your uh, utility company in check and your bills in check by being able to flag errors because now you have something that you can cross-reference what you have versus what you use versus what the utility company is telling you that you're using. Earlier, uh, Tiffany was talking about electronic data interface connector. Um, any large retailer across the country um, uses this to send um, purchase orders and work orders uh, between their clients. Um, Archibus has uh, implemented it to, for us to be able to import via ANSI, uh, ASCII, or Excel um, files via our um, utility companies. Um, this is an unbelievable the useful tool because you can actually directly map once you've imported it into Archibus into the format that you'd want uh, to do. Okay, everybody knows that um, Archibus has a mobility um, application. Um, the, this mobility application today now tracks hazardous waste and it's brand new, it was just released it allows inventory managers, lab managers, or principal investigators, emergency response team. Uh, it basically gives them a way for them to accurately um, and graphically look at the information. So the, the two screenshots that I have now is basically I'm looking at a city level, and then I'm looking at a, um, at a building level. From there, I drill down into the actual um, floor plan and into the actual room and location of where the hazardous waste is. And then the unique thing that Archibus has done is if I'm in a hospital or in an area where I get into a room and that room actually has bins in it, and those bins have things that require barcodes, um, Archibus has implemented um, barcodes within the mobility platform that allow you to actually um, do um, a compliance or audit on 
each individual bin. So I can actually have it a cabinet with uh, needles, syringes, whatever you want in a closet. And now I can track my bin number within my mobile phone and I actually be able to scan the barcode and do an audit on all my hazardous waste uh, within the organization. The views I was showing you earlier were on the smartphone. This is basically the views going on on the, uh, on the tablet. And obviously on the tablet, it gives you a much uh, bigger view. But another thing that they've done is they've allowed you to um, drill down to rooms, but you can now um, classify your hazardous waste by uh, different tier levels. And I don't think that there's a limit. I've seen about 11 in there, but I don't think there's a limit by the amount that you can actually tier within Archibus. Again, within the, uh, the bin, um, you can actually drill down to each individual um, piece of inventory, and you can actually flag it. Um, you can create a service request or a work, a work request for a specific bin. And again, along the lines of within those bins, you can catalog, you can catalog and analyze um, more intense and define basically the one thing I saw while I was down at the show was the ability to be able to assign different hazardous materials to different groups, but also different um, employees. And then certain employees, only certain employees would be able to have access to certain rooms. So actually, if I flip back on the floor plan, we'd actually see a floor plan where certain staff members will only see certain rooms that actually have the hazardous material that's um, accessible to them. Because some of them, they won't be accessible to them. OK, this is um, just a floor plan. Um, it basically just presents an integrated quick view of all the hazards that you've registered within Archibus, and it includes things like um, assessments or hazardous chemical locations or locations of hazardous waste. And for those that want that PowerPoint after, I actually put the uh, navigation path for all these um, screenshots at the bottom of the slides um, so that you can actually go right into Archibus and, um, and look at them yourselves if you have that module implemented. We talked about it earlier, um, first responders. Um, just imagine the day that uh, the fire truck come to a building and somebody within the organization can actually show up with uh, a tablet and show occupancy plans where people are located and actually show people who have um, exited the rooms and more importantly show the first responder teams identifi identifiable areas where they should not go due to um, hazardous waste material. Again, uh, within Archibus here, this allows you to actually highlight the assessments that were done. And if you look, um, we're highlighting by, by building, by room. And if you look in the right, you can actually see where you have levels of elevation, which is high. Um, now I can look across all my buildings and I can find and prioritize, um, based on the assessments, which ones I should be getting um, fixed first or which ones I should be getting compliant on first. Again, this is um, more of the same, but this one's not showing the rooms. It's actually showing the materials that are in the rooms, and it's classifying the materials. And if you look, uh, we've got a red one there that says extremely hazardous. Very useful for national defense RCMP. And of course, after you've done all this, and you've done all the assessments and compliances, you can do a thing within Archibus called um, update room status. And within the, Arch within the update room status, you can actually, after you've done an audit, you can actually do a full bulk um, room import, meaning uh, somebody can walk through and then click through and update actually 20 rooms at once that are compliant versus non-compliant.
This is a game brand new to Archibus. Um, you can email notifications, and these email notifications can reach staff and vendors, and these vendors do not need to be registered to um, Web Central or Archibus. The contact information just needs to be within the repository. And basically, emergency contacts could be, you know, like I said, full-time employees, external vendors. Um, but basically, within the definition of emergency contacts, you can now provide a single uh, repository of contact information. And if I flip the slides, this drills down to actually who you have as contacts. And basically, you can pick the building code, the floor code um, for each individual and assign them within a group. And getting e a little even deeper into um, the emergency preparedness, emergency preparedness now has a document library where I can actually store my compliance documents and my certifications or my continuity plans uh, within a repository where you can actually click on a PDF or a Word document and pop that up. A lot I have here again is just managing uh, your compliancy and the locations and where we're located, and then you could reselect. Um, you could basically select the level of compliances that you have in place and categorize them here. So brand new to. Um, so Archibus is added compliance integration with maintenance workflows. And I'm going to get into a couple of things here so you guys can actually read the slides. Um, one of the most useful things that Archibus did in the last updated version 22 is they actually integrated themselves within the building operations so that within the environmental side, I can actually create uh, and manage a requirement or I can actually create um, a preventative maintenance uh, work order or I can actually introduce preventive maintenance within the workflow of the environmental health and safety. So if somebody broke something within compliance, it would actually trigger and send an email um, either to the person in, in charge of it or their boss. So here, this is just showing how you can assign um, a preventive maintenance procedure for a compliant requirement. And this is the same thing that I just spoke about for rental maintenance, but uh, doing it through the um, on-demand. Um, within the on-demand, you can have a single compliance event can trigger multiple work requests within the system automatically. So once you've got all your data in place, um, all these triggers are in place, can now trigger uh, work requests and emails for a compliance event. And I'm almost done. I think I am done. That's the last slide, folks. Terrific. Thank you, Frank. Um, now we're going to uh, definitely thank you for your time, and thanks for everybody that's hanging in. Um, we are going to have um, Jasmine Jakes next. She's going to go over some of the application enhancements and, and things, um, if uh, Frank can pass through the baton. Jasmine? Thank you. All right, thanks, um, Diana and Frank. Um, hi, everyone. I I attended the application track at the Archivist Conference this year, and there was a lot of new functionality uh, out in version 22, so I will get right to it. So the first item is the strategic space planning application. This is a new application for the space for space planning and forecasting, and it's part of the space planning and management domain. Uh, for those people on the phone who may be familiar with the Arquebus Windows client server, Arquebus has moved a lot of the functionality that is available within the strategic master planning 
module into Web Central with this application. So now in Web Central, you can do things like automatically create baseline allocations using your current room inventory, uh, create functional groups with detailed space requirements. Uh, so this is a cool feature, and it gives you the ability to identify and group together areas that cannot be split between floors. Uh, so for example, an MRI machine room and patient area areas need to be allocated together. So the using functional groups and space requirements can tie these two spaces together and show them together in the stack diagram. You can also create space requirements using room standards information, so standard area and the standard cost. Um, develop forecast requirements that can specify growth over periods of time. And develop scenarios at the business unit, division, department, or functional group level. Uh, so this console also includes the ability to add a new building to a scenario without at actually adding the building to the active building inventory. And the system brings in your lease information and will automatically create allocation events based on lease expiries. Um, you can drag and drop the allocations between stacking diagrams that automatically creates events. And the gap analysis tab shows you where you may be under or over allocated through your scenarios. And it also includes the ability to export the presentation to PowerPoint, which is being included in more and more places throughout Web Central. So the advanced portfolio forecasting application is also a new application and it is under the real estate portfolio management domain. So this application is again for planning um, and forecasting and it includes all the same functionality as the strategic space planning application but adds on to those features with the ability to pull in the information from cost administration and charge back and invoicing applications so you, that you can develop cost forecasting tied to your space forecasting uh, based on a building's real cost that you're already tracking against a building. So depending on what level of detail uh, your forecasting requires and if you currently track cost information would be considerations to determine which application is better suited for, for your installation. Oh, the um, real estate portfolio management domain also includes the portfolio forecasting application, and there's been no changes to that to previous versions, so same functionality in there. All right, so asset management domain. So there were three new applications added to asset management in version 22. Each application provides a different level of integration between uh, asset management and the other applications of Archibus. This slide uh, illustrates the functionality relationship between the applications. So I was going to do a brief overview of kind of the differences between, and then in the next couple slides go over, uh, highlight some of the new features in each. Um, so I'll start with the asset portal application. Uh, this is the same application as in previous versions of Archibus. Uh, there were no changes made to this, ver to this application in version 22. So this, this one focuses on uh, establishing your facility equipment and furniture inventories, uh, where they're located, the organization, ownership, and the person who uses it along with things uh, like an assets classification, their standards, information, and condition. Uh, the asset portal application also includes uh, the ability to track software and telecom information and where it's used. So 
The next one is Telecom Asset Management, and it is a new application designed for users upgrading from Windows Client Server who are using the telecommunications and cable management module who would like to move that information into a web environment. So this application allows you to develop an electronic inventory of your telecom items for equipment, faceplates, jacks, patch panels, and ports and also allows you to model the connections between the assets through a new telecom console, which we'll look at in a few slides. Asset Management is a new application that includes functionality for managing a larger portfolio of assets. Uh, so this application includes uh, management for buildings, properties, equipment, and furniture assets using a number of new views and consoles through Web Central and also through the Archivist mobile apps. Uh, the asset management application, as it says on the slide, is a superset of the asset portal and the telecom management applications. And lastly, the enterprise asset management. Uh, this application includes the functionality from all three other applications with the additional features for integrating with project management, uh, strategic space planning, and advanced portfolio forecasting, uh, creating a robust tool set for decision making and project execution when you're planning and, and managing a project. The Enterprise Asset Management application also includes an Asset Reconciliation Console, which leverages Archibus connectors to import asset data from other systems into Archibus. And the connectors allow you to compare changes that were made in other systems as to what the data looks like in Archibus. And you can also run reports to see what data has been added or updated. So we'll take a look at some of the new features available within these applications. So the first one is the registration console. And it's part of both the asset management and enterprise asset management applications. And it's designed for adding assets, buildings, properties, equipment, or furniture to your inventory. A single asset can be added or multiple assets can be added with only a few clicks, or you can use a barcode reader within this console as well. Um, the naming and numbering convention can be based on the last sequential numbers, so the system can go and, and fetch the last number that's been used and, and start you from there in your numbering convention based on a prefix that you've selected. And the console also includes the ability to review and update existing assets in inventory. And that's on the next tab, the search for existing assets. So the, the lifecycle console um, has three tabs across the top. The Asset Registry tab, very similar to the Registration console, allows you to review and update all the assets as well as providing the ability to add new assets to the inventory. So this, the first tab answers the questions, where is it and was it, what is its value for any of those asset options of buildings, properties, furniture, or equipment. The Asset Lifecycle Management tab shows you all of the information from the Registry tab, but also includes information about current activities that the asset is, is uh, assigned to, any historical transaction that, uh, that asset's been used for, and specifics about finance, project, uh, facility management, and IT-related information about the asset, depending on which asset you're looking at. So this tab answers questions like, what activities is an asset currently assigned to? Uh, what, what's the total history of this asset? And what is the relevant stakeholder information for the asset? 
The Asset Optimization tab presents metrics for evaluating assets in terms of financial performance, facility use, utilization, and risk assessment by analyzing uh, returns on net assets, understanding the criticality for equipment uh, in terms of your mission for the organization, and reviewing current target and benchmark values for a facility in condition index, for example. This tab answers the questions, are assets cost effectively supporting the enterprise mission? So the Asset Disposal Console is designed to guide you through the process of evaluating assets and, and disposing of those assets. So there's four tabs across the top in, the, in this console. Uh, the first one, Analyzing Assets for Disposal, allows you to review all of your asset information, determine if an asset or a group of assets should remain in the current inventory or be marked for evaluation or be marked for disposal. The second tab shows assets that were marked for evaluation and allows the asset manager to place the asset back in the current inventory if they've evaluated it and it's and it's still good to remain in the inventory, or they can mark the asset for disposal after evaluation. The third tab shows assets that are marked for disposal and allows that asset manager to indicate that the asset has either been disposed of, or they can assign the asset to a process to dispose of the asset. So for example, if the asset requires decommissioning, you may create a maintenance service request or a project action item to schedule and track the work to actually decommission the piece of equipment. Um, you can also create a waste action that integrates with the environmental module here, say if the asset contained hazardous material. And then the last tab, Update Inventory, can be used to monitor when that asset disposal process has been completed, and then the asset manager can update the asset to include any kind of disposal information uh, about the asset. So the Project Proposal Console is used to define space assets and facility management services required for a project when the project is in the status of proposed or requested. It allows a project planner to manage and develop project proposals, compare them to portfolio scenarios, and export the project to PowerPoint for presenting. As you can see, there are a lot of tabs across the top of this console, each tab allowing um, different information to be tracked against a project. Uh, a few of the functions within these tabs are things like viewing locations graphically on a map or floor plan, developing space requirements for the project, which is linked to that strategic space planning application if you've linked uh, a project through there, develop asset requirements for the project, develop milestones, the project team, communication log items, associate documents and work, um, and work with the project Gantt. Uh, it, the console also provides insight into proposed moves based off your planning scenario. Uh, and then you can, you can compare these different scenarios using the gap analysis, space use, usage, and requirements cost report. And there's a lot of built-in reports into these uh, consoles under the Reports button there. Okay, so the Telecom console. This is the last piece for asset management, and then I'll be going over a couple of the building operations enhancements. Uh, so this console can be used to build your build an inventory that can include, uh, like I mentioned, rooms and employees, equipment, faceplates and jacks, panels and ports, and software. The tabs on the left pane can be used to connect and trace telecom equipment to network equipment and ports. 
and if assets have been represented in CAD drawings, the floor plan will be displayed and network connections can be highlighted on the plan. And there are also a few built-in reports to show availabilities where Jack's available or um, uh, it's available for a person. Okay, so uh, there was some really cool functionality added to the Building Operations On Demand Work application in version 22. Uh, there was a lot of workflow flexibility um, added. The first one, so there's now the ability to, for a craftsperson to edit the request and then return the request to a supervisor, which could be handy for cases where the visible issue, like a burnt out light bulb, is not the root cause issue and actually is due to a plumbing leak. Um, a requester can now resubmit a rejected request, which again could be handy for cases where the requester can rectify the reason for a rejection rejection, and they can resubmit rather than entering a new request. A supervisor can now reissue a completed work request if additional work is still required, keeping all the history of the work on one request. Um, and the craftsperson can now create a new work request while currently working on a request and link it to that original request that they're working on. Um, and as a service desk manager, you can also create new requests linked to a closed work request, which is kind of cool. So for SLA enhancements, there's a new setting to determine if a supervisor or craftsperson can change the work request parameters. So you can uh, control kind of who has access to, to change parameters. Um, there's also a new setting which controls whether a changed work request should follow the new SLA parameters from the beginning, so go back to kind of the requested status, or start the new SLA from the current step in the existing work request. Uh, and the other SLA enhancement is an option to schedule a craftsperson immediately on a work request. Uh, so when you're auto-issuing a craftsperson in previous versions, the craftsperson was assigned to the next available service day. So this update uh, assigns them as soon as kind of that request is submitted and routed to them uh, based on the SLA parameters. Um, a, re a really great enhancement in this version is the ability to associate documents to equipment standards, PM procedures, and problem types, um, which are available right from the work request when the request is assigned to that procedure, problem type, or equipment standard. So documents now associated to PM procedures will come into the building operations console and display right in the work request details and allow that supervisor or craftsperson to review any manuals, um, safety checklists, anything related to that specific PM procedure or problem type or equipment standard, which is really cool. Um, version 22 also includes functionality to create super user profiles for people who use the search and manage view. So this setting allows the person to have access to all work requests, open or closed, regardless of the supervisor or work team, so nothing could get lost in the system. Uh, and lastly, for the Building Ops domain, there's been a few enhancements to the performance of the Building Operations Console. Um, so due to large volumes of, of data, four new application parameters have been um, added to control how data is loaded. So things um, like the maximum number of records can be specified to display, and then you can you know, click a little button to say, load more from within the view, so you're not loading everything all at once. Um, and there's the other one um, 
is you can control kind of if the Building Ops Console displays any work requests at all and you have to actually place a filter. Um, so they've added some, some cool options around uh, enhancing the performance of the Building Ops Console. And the last slide I have is on the space management enhancements. Um, so this slide shows two new features for space planning and management domain. The space console now integrates with the move management domain and it does this by including the ability to create a move order based on dragging and dropping employees on the floor plan. So um, like in previous versions, you can drag drag and drop, drop and it changes that person's assignment right away, but this new feature allows you to create a move order, which actually then doesn't update your current inventory until it goes and creates a move and you execute your move and, and close it and then it would automatically up, update your um, inventory. And the second feature um, the other space enhancements are all around improved drawing printing. Uh, so Archibus has included abilities to create report templates that can be used when generating PDF floor plans and the ability to create different backgrounds and plan types that can control the visible layers and the text including the placement of the text and the height uh, on floor plan exports right from the space console. So the, these are a powerful set of, of tools that can customize your, your printing of the drawings right from, right from the space console. So that's it for me, and uh, I will pass it back over to Iana. Great, thank you very much, Jasmine, appreciate it. Um, okay, so basically uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the community success through collaboration and um, I've got about 10 minutes um, just to talk about things like the uh, Archibus user group, uh, ongoing support options, some upcoming events and uh, some great ways to connect as well as a few, as well as a few success factors. Um, at Nexus, there was a considerable talk about family and about shared vision and collaboration. For me, it really was a central theme and the way forward for all of us will be through sharing data, information processes, and to be able to do our jobs effectively and articulate our value within the organizations and communities. Um, so the next slide is uh, on, on AUGs, and that's uh, the Archibus user groups. Um, one way to break out of our silos and to sharpen our skills and messaging is through participation in these groups. Um, the Archibus user groups continue to gain momentum and like everywhere, connecting and learning with colleagues and peers can really accelerate the learning curve. Um, Horizon has helped to foster and encourage this community growth. I've been lucky enough to attend several and help organize them um, and um, really to encourage the um, collaboration amongst our clients and with the community at large. So especially here in Canada, um, we've, we've, we're even recognized at Nexus for this effort. Uh, we're getting a Community Excellence Award in 2016. The hope is to con continue to support these AUGs. You can see a few of yourselves there. Um, I have lots of great pictures, lots of uh, things to, um, to share. Um, the trend really is expanding reach and collaboration. Um, I'll go back, sorry. Uh, the, the trend is to expand the reach and collaboration amongst these groups and it's starting to uh, really gain traction. So because of virtual being able to have these kinds of meetings, um, we can really connect facility people working with the enterprise suite across organizations and uh, there's some help to, to help plan those meetings too. There's over 50 user groups worldwide um, and several are currently active Canadian groups so you have lots of possibilities. There's Ontario, West Coast and Calgary just to name a few and I know that there's more coming along. 
So um, our monthly newsletter um, includes information on when and where and who's hosting, but you can also hop online to our events page or go to the Archibus Community tab to register a group. Um, I'd like to take a, a moment just to thank the City of Brampton, City of Hamilton, Region of York, uh, Enercan, BCIT, Simon Fraser University, uh, the Fraser Valley Health Authority, and the Calgary Board of Education, and more that did step up. These are folks like you that, that hosted an event um, and uh, or have stepped up to be leaders. Or um, And there's really a call to action from Nexus to, uh, to join uh, your these AUGs and, and, and get more, in, you can contact me or Archibus to get involved. One of the things I wanted to also share was as a multi-tiered support that we, we offer our users and clients. And it's through subscription and maintenance, uh, general technical support, um, and expert service blocks, which many of you are aware of. We also offer support in business analytics and project management, as well as road mapping the future of technology um, pieces uh, into the uh, into your your to achieve your goals. There's implementation and data integration services. Uh, we provide on we provide resourcing uh, both on site and online. Um, and there's also the same goes for training and mentoring. Um, there's on site, online, and now video options. So um, we also support the, uh, our, our users and, and, and clients through the community newsletters, user groups, workshops, webcasts, social media, and, my, and all of the above. So I did mention this, the self-serve video library. We've got 25 frequently requested topics that we've, um, that we've recorded. Uh, the, um, they, they range from the end user training videos to power users to systems admin, um, and then there's also fundamentals and domain training videos. There's really um, there's there's sessions that are are from 30 to an hour and a half um, to to um, upwards of, uh, of uh, six hours of training, and these these are basically set up so it's a self serve. Um, so you can train your users on demand, you can bring people up to speed quickly, you can refresh their knowledge. Um, they've been designed and priced to make the most of uh, anyone's training budget. So you can bundle them um, and choose the topics at the right time and also build the, the knowledge library so you can, you can save them and share them um, with those in your organization. Um, you know, it can be as simple as working with SLAs or creating home pages or how to do ad hoc reporting or using the Building Ops Console. Um, it, we've, we've really tried to hit the, the most requested topics for our training. Now, we always do have the availability of, of the custom training and, and, you know, the courses, but this is a way, this is kind of an exciting new way to deliver information. Upcoming events, uh, we've got a federal government's workshop coming up in a couple of weeks. It's a one day. Um, this is this is going to be in Quebec. Um, it's it's uh, really designed for our uh, for our government users and some of their special circumstances. Uh, IFMA's coming up with a regional fusion. Um, we've got World Workplace coming up in San Diego on October 5th to the 7th, uh, 2016. ARPIC is the um, Canadian, the Real Property National Workshop, uh, Real Property Institute of Canada, and the theme this year is Real Property, Real Change, and Innovate for Results. Um, that's in Ottawa, and it's going to be over in November 15th to the 17th. Um, of course, Wayne alluded to Nexus being in Washington next year, so hopefully you folks will be able to join us. That's going to be in May. Um, and then there's some um, AUGs being planned now. The next one is supposed to be at the City of Hamilton, I believe, and that's going to be in the summer, uh, early fall timeframe. Uh, West Coast is also looking, ICBC is uh, going to host, and that's looking in the fall. So some of those may be online and virtual, so you, you, you know, keep a note for the uh, newsletter, keep an eye out for the newsletter, and, and, uh, or contact us to get more information on those. Um, topics of interest. Uh, this is this is really important because we have the free webinars that we're doing, like one of them is today. But we are planning to to do um, quite a bit more and step up uh, with 
specific topics of interest to you. So I'm going to be looking for your input, um, sending out a survey after this uh, uh, webinar and to our clients um, and, and contacts that I have just to find out exactly what you guys want to hear about. What modules are, do you want to learn about? What might be of interest to you now or in the future? You know, are you really keen on the mobile framework and seeing how that works? Um, or expanding the user base, like if you want more soft skills in terms of reinventing the role of Archibus within the organization or, or selling oneself. There's also, um, you know, there's there's a whole myriad of them, and I'll put a bunch of them out there so you can just kind of put them in a, into uh, into order of preference, and and then also have uh, options to to add your own. Um, always looking for your input and uh, and your interest and and how you guys want to uh, connect. So that brings us to ways to connect. So um, not very well. We've got um, we've got a few hundred uh, followers on Horizon One. Um, that's our Twitter. Um, our Twitter handle. Um, we also are active on LinkedIn and Facebook, and you can always reach out to us. I mean, it's important to um, to to let us know what you want. Um, there's a lot of resources out there: white papers, there's testimonials, there's uh, content webcasts. Where there's even you know cool new uh, new um, on the next slide uh, where. There's a there's a YouTube uh, Archibus TV and and that so, but sign up for the AUGs and explore your options. This is our newsletter we just uh, sent out to you would have probably all gotten it. Um, we're looking at doing an RRS feed um, as well as. Um, you know, you, you can connect through professional groups on LinkedIn. There's an Archibus professional group um, that has some really interesting conversations and you can input and, 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 uh, and you know, ask questions and, and uh, some great conversations that are around um, Archibus and, and, and how their people are working with it. So, Success is really best achieved through a collaboration of technology, business, processes, and people, bringing it all together. Like any implementation project, there's fundamental underlying factors that will impact our success, our success and our achieving our goals. Mine is One of mine is to build and maintain a collaborative environment that help us all ex succeed. So these factors are things like an active involvement. It's key. Management support and team buy-in is, is very helpful. Clear objectives, requirements, and scope. Um, we, we like to say, uh, you know, if, if things are sort of phased, you can you can have lots of little, very loud wins. So good communication and accountability um, in your process, and the solid approach and methodology is critical to to uh, achieving your goals. Uh, it also helps with skilled resources, so education and tools really count. So that's. Um, that's what I wanted to uh, share from from Nexus. Um, I was really grateful and and happy that uh, that people could come today and um, share with you just some of the ideas and uh, some of the highlights of the event. Nothing really beats face to face, but uh, we we do our best to bring the messaging from uh, from our from Archibus home and also. Um, get you some tools to make some decisions and and uh, and um, collaborate. So we do have a, a few minutes. Well, we're right at time, I'm sorry, but we um, do have time for the open mic and I can unmute people if, if anyone uh, online, I know there were a few people down in San Diego that might want to uh, share what they learned from um, Archibus or from Nexus, or even just if they have any comments or um, input. Um, feel free to drop off if you've got a hard stop and need to need to uh, get on with your day. But appreciate. I will stop uh, recording now. So.